A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to our video. And today, it's going to be an integral battle between five integrals. All have the upper and lower bounds from zero to one. The first is a standard integral logarithm of x, the natural log at that integrate with respect to x. Next candidate right here is the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log of x dx. And then it gets a bit more funky in reference to my last video because you guys wanted to see a bit more. Next, next up we are going to integrate x with respect to the natural log of x. And then we are going to go a tiny little bit further. Next we are going to integrate the natural log with respect to the natural log of x. And last but not least, we are going to integrate x times natural log with respect to the natural log of x. And then also a problem for the viewer. What is it gonna be? Yield, if it's even possible, see, check the last video out, link up there. What is the logarithm of x? Integrate with respect to x times the logarithm of x. Try it out for yourself, all of those. Post the solutions down there in the comments below. And now we are going to start off with the first problem. A standard one, a classic one integrating the log of x with respect to x. How would you do something like this? Well, best with integration by parts using the di method. It doesn't look like you could use integration by parts because there's only one thing here, but if you take a closer look, logarithm of x is the same as logarithm of x times one, because if it have one logarithmic apple, then it's still just a logarithmic apple. Does make sense, right? Now we can use the di method, for example, for integration by parts. And we are going to integrate the 1 with respect to x and we are going to differentiate log of x with respect to x because finding the differential of log of x is easier than finding the integral because this is our original question. Anything else wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. So natural log of x differentiated by definition is going to be 1 of x and integrating 1 is going to yield just x. Now we are going to multiply those together and then we are going to take the integral of this right here. Yielding overall x times the natural log of x integrated from 0 to 1 or evaluated from 0 to 1 and then we are going to take negative the integral from 0 to 1 or x times 1 over x is just 1 once again so dx meaning if we were to integrate this right here we are going to end up with x evaluated from 0 to 1 at 0 it's going to vanish because it's a monic polynomial and at 1 it's going to be 1 so overall, what we are ending up with is x times log of x from 0 to 1 minus 1. Now we are going to take a look at the upper and lower bounds. That's the really only interesting part here, actually. If we plug 1 in, then we are going to have 1 times log of 1, which is going to be 1 times 0, which is going to yield 0. Meaning this right here is going to yield a negative value overall. And this is the limit as x approaches 0 of x times log of x. So our question becomes, what is the limit as x approaches 0 of x times log of x? And then we're going to have minus 1 left. Also, it's the second part of integration, meaning we're going to have a negative sign here. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what happens at 0. 0 plus at that, obviously. But since it's an integral from 0 to 1, we are going to approach 0 just from the right hand side. Now, if we like 0 in here, we have 0 times log of 0 is negative infinity. 0 times negative infinity ain't good whatsoever. So we are going to rewrite our problem a tiny little bit using L'Hopital. We are going to use the sledgehammer method of um, limits. If we use L'Hopital here, and I'm going to make a little um, a side note here, I'm going to denote the limit with capital L. Um, I'm going to put the x into the denominator, rewriting everything as the natural log of x divided by 1 over x. Which does check out. Take the reciprocal, you have x times log of x once again. Now, this right here is sufficient to use L'Hopital because as x approaches 0, this is negative infinity divided by positive infinity. Um, so it's an infinity divided by infinity situation. Now what we are going to do, using L'Hopital, we are going to differentiate the uh, uh, upper and lower part. So that's limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x by definition of the logarithm and 1 over x differentiated is negative 1 over x squared. And 1 over x squared is the same as 1 over x but is squared. I'm going to rewrite it this way because this way 1 over x is going to cancel out in the, in the numerator and denominator. 
leaving us charged with 1 over negative 1 over x, which is the same as negative, so the limit as x approaches infinity, of negative x, not infinity, 0. And now if we let x go to 0, all of this is going to vanish. This part right here is going to go to 0, going to die somewhere in Mexico, giving us a solution of negative 1 in the process for the first integral, which does make sense if you take a look at the curve of the logarithm and it's below the x-axis, obviously. So it's a negative area, you could say. Now next up, we are going to do x times log of x, and we are going to use the the I method once again, obviously, because this right here is just an easy integration by part problem. It's not a problem whatsoever. We are going to differentiate the logarithm once again, but this time we are going to integrate x, giving us x squared over 2 in the process. Now, if we take the integral right here, once again, on the other part, so at first we are going to multiply the log of x times x squared over 2, and then we are going to have negative the integral from 0 to 1, one of this also, variate from 0 to 1, off. Now 1 over x and x squared is going to cancel out to just x over 2, so 1 half is a factor that we can bring to the outside using the linearity of the integral, and we are going to have x dx. Overall, this last integral is going to evaluate to x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. Once again, it's a monic polynomial, at 0 it's going to vanish. Overall, we are going to have just 1 half times 1 half, giving us negative 1 quarter over here. So we are going to end up with a situation similar to that one once again. On 1, due to the logarithm, it's going to vanish. We are going to end up with negative the limit as x approaches 0 of logarithm of x times x squared divided by 2. You can go through the whole L'Hopital process once again. But this time, instead of 1 over x, you are going to end up with 1 over x squared down here in the denominator. By differentiating, you are going to end up with some factor times 1 over x to the third power. Once again, it's going to cancel out. You are going to end up with some factor times x squared over here. Thus, all of that approaches 0 once again, giving us in the process negative 1 quarter as the value of our integral up here. There was just fun in games, those were elementary integrals, but I thought including those might not hurt because some people um, think of those as interesting examples for integration by part. Now here's the bit more interesting part. Integrating x with respect to the logarithm of x. How to do something like that? Well, once again, as mentioned before, take a look at my video on the riemann stieltjes integral. Linked on there in the description or up here in the info box. The riemann stieltjes integral is just a generalization of the Riemann integral or the Dumbo integral, where we don't have a linear scaling as our differential one form. Now we have a differential k form over here in some kind of way. It can be logarithmic scaling, it can be exponential scaling, parabolic scaling, whatsoever. But at the end of my last video, we imposed a little property on the riemann stieltjes integral. Namely, what we can do is we can turn an integral of the kind integral from a to b of f of x integrated with respect to some real valued function, real to real function g of x, we can rewrite this as the integral from a to b of f of x times the differential of our function that we hear and then integrate everything with respect to x. Many viewers have noted something out, namely that it's similar to substitution, namely we have an implicit differentiation hidden in here somewhere. Namely, what we have over here, this differential k form that we got, or differential 1 form in our case, is just one part of our regular differential. Namely, just take a look at that. And this can be your monomic device to dealing with riemann stieltjes integral under the condition that our function that we have here in our differential 1 form or k form is continuously differentiable. And our logarithm is be, because our logarithm is obviously from 0 to 1 differentiable, we, we get 1 over x out, and our differential 1 over x is also continuous on our interval from 0 to 1 all the way through. Do an epsilon delta proof or just trust the sketch. <laughs> Checks out nicely, right? This right here is 1 over x, and from 0 to 1 it's obviously <laughs> continuous. Thus, log of x is continuously differentiable, and if we differentiate it, the natural log of x, so using Leibniz notation, that's the key to this monomic device, 
we are going to get 1 over x. And now multiplying everything by the x on both sides, <laughs> this is the fun with, um, with differential algebra, we are going to get that the differential k form, d log of x, is the same as 1 over x dx. And this right here is exactly what I said before. We can rewrite the Riemann Steltius integral as just our original function times the differential of our function that we have here. And then integrate everything with respect to x, which is exactly that part. Meaning we can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of x times 1 over x integrate with respect to x. And now everything falls apart nicely. And I think this is really cool. This integral looks seriously weird. And now suddenly it just turns into the integral of this right here is going to vanish dx from 0 to 1. We have covered this before. Set phase. This is just going to yield 1 in the process. And this basically demystifies the whole Riemann Stetis integral under the condition that our function over here, our real to real function, is continuously differentiable. Now we can just continue. And this is the only problem that you see for the fewer exercise. So if you were in an anal class, the professor would ask you, prove that this right here is continuously differentiable to use the aforementioned property of the Riemann Stetis integral. Now we have discussed this before. We can rewrite this right here into the integral from 0 to 1 of a log of x times x, no, 1 of x integrated with respect to x. And now solving this integral is actually not too hard because we can use substitution. By substituting, so let log of x be equal to t, we can implicitly differentiate both sides, giving us in the, problem, uh, in, in the process that 1 over x dx is nothing other than dt, our new differential. And 1 over x dx is nothing other than dt, which we already have here. So this right here is going to turn into the integral from something to something, give me a second, of just t dt, which is going to be t squared from, uh, t squared over 2 from. Now if we plug 0 into um, our function log of x, log of x is going to approach in the process negative infinity. So lower bounds negative infinity. If we plug 1 into log of x, we are going to get a t value of 0 out. So that's from negative infinity to 0. On 0, it's going to vanish, just going to be 0. And when t approaches negative infinity, we have infinity squared over 2, which is just infinity, meaning this right here actually diverges. It goes to positive infinity. What a bummer. This integral doesn't exist, even though it looks like it could exist. And here's another monomic device, namely what you can do is you can introduce a substitution that we did right here. And this is why so many people thought, oh, Riemann Stetis integral, this really looks like substitution for special cases like those it does. Be because you can see this right here is just a dummy variable overall. Meaning we have the dummy, dummy variable over here too in the differential k form. Meaning we can just substitute this to be t dt. Many people have pointed this out. And I just want to address it time a little bit. Hence the, um, the mess of those integrals here in this video. And now for the last one, and this is pretty demystified now, it's pretty easy. d log of x is going to turn into 1 over x dx, and 1 over x dx is going to cancel out with the x over here. Meaning what we are going to end up is just the integral from 0 to 1 of log of x dx, and now we are going to go full circle back to our original problem. This is just going to yield negative 1. And this right here looked really funky, right? At first sight, because this is something where you can just say, well, we have log of x here and there, well, we just substitute it for some t. It doesn't work out that way, but this is where we can use this nice property of the Steltius integral to deal with it in a very nice manner. And as I mentioned before, I invite you to try out this problem for yourself and see if you can figure it out. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, then certainly you are also going to enjoy the contents of today's sponsor, Brian, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. In my opinion, all of those integrals were a lot of fun. Some were really basic, like the integral of log of x, but sometimes you just need to go back to the basics, take a deep breath, 
And just try if you can figure out simple things like those, even if it's just using a simple trick like multiplying by one to get the job done. And this is where Preint could also come in for your studies. Preint is your top source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. It really doesn't matter if you want to learn something about integrals today, or maybe it's just regular calculus, analysis, physics, computer science, chemistry. It doesn't matter if you want to brush up on old knowledge that you once had, or maybe new things that you want to learn for your studies at university or high school. Brilliant definitely got you covered with their nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM that you can quite possibly think of. And the best thing about Brilliant is not that they provide you with the abstract knowledge of dealing with the Dumbo integral, for example, using step functions and the like. No, what they do is they transfer the knowledge over to their users using graphics and visualizations that you can play around with. In a very playful manner, you are going to learn something at home or on the go. You can also use their app in no time at all. I seriously mean it. Go over to any of their courses on linear algebra, for example, Markov chains. That's a very high mathematics topic, but with their great visualizations and everything they provide you in their courses with, from the basics upwards to the really high mathematics stuff. They are certainly going to make you better at the topic in no time at all. Try it out for yourself. I mean it. If you don't trust my words here, I'm just an internet man, then that's totally fine. But no one's stopping you from just giving it a shot for completely free by using my link at the top of the description, print.org slash flamblemaths, or by using my QR code somewhere up here. With it, you are going to get a 30-day free trial of amazing awesomeness. Try the whole landscape for, of Brilliant for completely free. Try everything. Do the Markov chain courses and also some analysis courses and calculus stuff. And if it feels like it's something for you, like seriously, a long-term relationship between you and the services, then definitely make sure to make complete use of the link and the first 200 people to do so get 20% off an annual premium subscription. It's seriously worth it. They add so much new stuff on a regular basis and they are always trying to make their old courses better and better. And adding new stuff in their old courses too, such that you can learn something new even if you went through their courses already. It's seriously amazing. They got a brilliant website, pun intended. So you should check it out and support the channel this way. I think that's watching. I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. Also, don't forget to support the channel on Patreon and Amazon Dex to the OSU guys. Flamble day. See ya.